Okay, a new book from Tumblr House, new The Mass book. and Its Folklore by John Hobson Matthews. Wow. Originally written in 1903. This is one of the books that you recommended we publish. I sure did. Why did you, why did you recommend this book? Well, because of its <laughs> cover. No, no, that, that, that was the cover you put on. Mm, yes. No, I recommended it. I'll tell you what. Years ago, when I was in high school, uh, I did something very strange. I read a Father Lassant's Missal, which had a wonderful introduction to the Mass in it. And if, I mean, the, 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 the forward could be reproduced as a booklet that's in itself, wow. actually. It's that good. Uh, but it quoted in one section extensively from the book, The Mass and its Folklore. Well, I had to go down to the Central Library and find the thing. Because, you know, if it wasn't in the Central Library in Los Angeles in those days, well, it just didn't exist, or you had to go to the library alone. Anyway, uh, I fell in love with it. I fell in absolute love with the thing. Um, and, of course, the man who wrote it, uh, John Hobson Matthews, was an interesting character himself. Uh, he was of Cornish descent, convert to Catholicism in Malta, of all places. Mm. And then settled in Wales, where he was a pillar of the church. And, of course, the church in Wales was not in good shape. So being a pillar of the church in Wales was nothing nothing to the faint of heart. Well, was he a priest? How was he no, a pillar? No, he was a layman. Oh, okay. He, he was one of those people that give a lot of money to the church. Ah, uh, okay. See, because, of course, he was getting a lot back. Ah. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see. Yeah. Ha ha ha. He uh, was one of the founders of St. David's Society, which was a missionary thing in Wales. And they helped support priests and so forth. Anyway, he loved the Mass, as this makes very apparent. Yes, absolutely. And he, he went into uh, both the medieval, uh, the, the way Catholics dealt with the Mass in the Middle Ages, but also the penal times in England, Scotland, and Wales. We tend to forget that the Mass was illegal at that period, and people went to Mass at the risk of their lives often enough. You know, something that um, we don't do now, it's you know at the risk of losing a couple of minutes on Sunday. Uh, but at any rate, he brings all that to the fore. He points out things like the fact that in the Arthurian legends, they almost always start the morning looking at, at the elevation of the host ah, yes. at Mass. You know, that's a big deal for them. Uh, and the implication being that as it was for our ancestors, it should be for us. Uh, but he does so in such a, a lovely and remarkable way. I can't praise the book highly enough, which is why it was after you all to republish it. Yeah, um, so it's, yeah, it's filled with tidbits that highlight the rich tradition of the uh, Trentine Mass, both fact and folklore. Yeah. Um, so, on the fact side, one of the cool things that, that I thought was really interesting was the, uh, where it talked about the last gospel. You know, if you go to a Latin mass, you know what we're talking about, the last gospel, John's gospel. Yeah. Um, and how that was put there, uh, well, actually, before that was put there, everybody would sort of do their own thing. You seem to know off the books more about this, well, this phenomenon. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing was that people, after the last blessing, uh, the priest and, and the other members of the sanctuary party would process back and they'd be reciting St. John's Gospel. Meanwhile, everybody else, they might be praying, they might be jumping up and down, they might be chattering away, kind of like in your normal parish. Uh, whatever they were doing, they were not either staying to pray or leaving. Uh, they were just hanging yeah, out. Yeah. What the last Gospel did was it... Uh, was a, number one, it served as a reminder that it was time to go. Number two, the last gospel, which is the first chapter of St. John's Gospel, is a powerful statement, really, of the entirety of the Catholic faith. It's, yes. And it, it, so you see, you've just received, you received the scriptures to begin with. Yeah. Then you received our Lord, well, and in between uh, the priest's meditations on the scriptures, which could be good or bad, then you received our Lord, now you're going, and you're sort of en revoir, your farewell, is a summation of the Catholic faith. The Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. Mm. I mean, that, and that's why you'll notice whenever 
if there's any reference made to the Incarnation in the last Gospel at the Creed, and then again sometimes uh, in the version of the Missal before John the 22nd, uh, sorry, before John the 23rd, they would have sometimes, um, uh, at Christmas, I guess, is the other time, you've got a, uh, you've got a Gospel that refers to the Incarnation and you genuflect. Mm. Well, liturgically, whenever the Incarnation comes up, we genuflect. Same way we do genuflecting in front of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. I see. So, at any rate, uh, that's why the last Gospel was put in there. And again, you wouldn't know that if you didn't read the book. Exactly. Exactly. Now, um, so that was the fact that example of the facts uh, that they tell you about the Mass. Now, the folklore side is... is Actually, even more interesting to me. Um, one of the one of my favorites was they talk about how mass extends going to mass extends your lifespan by the amount that you go to mass. Yes. So for that hour, you don't actually age like like let's say let's say in your total life you've gone I don't know one year worth of time. Well, that one year gets added to your lifespan uh, apparently. That's right. That's right. That's what they said. And I I love that because. It shows how much they love and cherish the mass. Yeah. It, you know, like that could never come out of this modern age, where you know we want to get in, we want to get out, and then we want to get to the important part of our Sunday, which is like a ball game or whatever. Yeah, what's wrong with that? <laughs> I don't get it. No, it's very true though. Uh, and the, the more um, they had a love for the mass, which well extended in the world of fact, to be willing to die for it, in the world of folklore, to be willing to live for it. Mm. And that, we, we just don't have that sense. There's a lot of sense we don't have. In fact, you could say that we're pretty, we lack sense. We, yeah, so, I mean, this is really, I mean, we direly need this book right now to reinvigorate our love of the Mass. And, and we, this is something that we should pray about, too. You know, we, we always pray about, you know, temporal things, you know, you know, we want, you know, a girlfriend, a job, money, financial stability, but, you know, another thing I think we should pray is for our growth. Yeah. Lord, give me more faith. Let me be more charitable. Let me be more patient. Let me be more Absolutely. humble. Let me because love if, you more. If we don't pray for these things, we don't get these things. We, that's true. So anyway, yeah, so get this book, tumblrhouse.com. In, in order to, uh, to buy this book, just click the link on your screen that's popping up right but now. <coughs> There it goes. And, yeah. <laughs> and that'll do it for this episode.